So what is architecture? Well, to me, architecture is actually everything that bridges nature and technology. We're trying to organize the human environment uh, for people to live in, to have to enjoy their lives and to really lead a comfortable life, but maybe also create possibilities for people which wouldn't be there otherwise. So it starts with a very simple primitive thing. We create shelter, we create an inside which is separated from an outside. Well, that's the very basic of architecture and around this we start to create possibilities. And so in the end, maybe everything is architecture, that's what uh, Hollein said, but at the same time, architecture is really a tool that allows to create new possibilities. But always a spatial tool. It's an extremely spatial tool. I think that is the most interesting thing for us, that we, other people have to live in spaces, we can think about spaces, we can create spaces, we can design spaces, we can modify and uh, amend spaces. It's a great privilege, but at the same time it's also uh, a big responsibility. Um, and so what can architecture do? I think architecture really has to make a difference. And it means that whenever we do something, we probably have to destroy something else. So in the first instance, we have to create something that is better than whatever we found in the beginning. And we have to create possibilities for people for, uh, um, well, to, to take something and turn it into their own. Like we offer, we, architecture needs to offer potential and possibilities for people to meet, for people to talk for people to enjoy life, maybe also to create meaning for people to think about uh, what is life and uh, what are they doing and also just, um, well, create pleasure. Um, on your office description you talk about uh, socially and environmental, environmentally responsible um, building. Can you say something about it or do you have an example of it? Well, we are from, like all of us are from a digitally trained generation and we actually used to embrace new tools and new possibilities and new technologies and that's one, on one hand there is the enthusiasm about technology and what you can do with it. On the other hand we are all very aware of uh, the limitation of our resources and new technology doesn't mean that you just create things in, because you can do it and you create more and more and you make it even uh, more crazy. I think we really like to think about what we say, do more with less. So it's not less is more, it's more like we all know that there's an endless uh, amount of resources but we really want to use them to use it to design and to, to be very aware of what you can do with it to create architecture, to create good quality design, to offer possibilities while reducing the amount of material, maybe, the amount of money could also be, the amount of, uh, uh, of technical material that's, that's used. So we're trying to do two things. We're trying to reduce the input of material and resources like energy consumption and so on. But at the same time we're doing this using the latest advance in technology to do simulations rather than creating models to simulate or to understand how things work, the performance of things, before we start cutting it into material, creating big uh, mock-ups or even producing um, lots of waste. So we're trying to eliminate waste in a very conscious way, but for us that means that there's always a way to design your way out of it rather than just reducing it. It's not always the most simplest way to reduce uh, the, the um, the need of resources, but it is something which is a very complex process, a very complex design process, testing lots of uh, possibilities, always trying to understand the connections in the background, what is related to what else, and what if you change this and create that input. So we're trying to, to set up uh, an understanding of the factors that are limitations, and then playing with it, turning these into opportunities, and really optimizing the effects. And uh, what is your architectural position? Our architectural position actually arises from that. We are not so much 
interested in everlasting values or into the formal aspects of design. We're more interested in understanding what the real problems are at hand and then trying to connect to research the connections and, uh, and the underlying principles. So we're trying to study how things operate, what is actually the problem. If someone says, just build me a nice house, that's something that is very difficult because what is nice? So you have to start to understand what is a house, what is nice, how does it relate to the surroundings, what's actually the, um, the aspect of manufacturing it, what would be something where it all can be turned into a piece that makes sense in itself. So we're trying to look at it from different angles and to really develop, develop a concept for each project that is sort of holistic in the sense that all the aspects which are important, they're connected to each other, they're not so much in a contradicting way, but we create a model for this design and then we start to play with the variables and the parameters to really actualize the potential which is in there. And usually we're only happy if we find something which is sort of unique in the sense that it is a solution to this project, maybe not so much for another project, a solution that arises from asking the right questions. So a lot of work we spend is asking the questions and really trying to see, to formulate a pathway to answer certain critical issues in, in a project. And that uh, sometimes that is something which maybe a client wasn't aware of in the beginning. Or sometimes it's quite difficult for us in competitions because besides the question of a competition, can you please build a lot of cheap square meters on this plot, we're always looking for another question which is the much more interesting one to answer. So maybe how about what is cheap? Like is it a standardized system or can it also be cheap in a sort of mass customized uh, uh, production if you find if you define the right tools. It's quite difficult because we always create an extra lot of work and an extra sort of research. At the same time it's very rewarding because we're always trying to research. That's why the office is called the laboratory for visionary architecture. We're always trying to research something which wouldn't usually which wouldn't necessarily be part of the of a simple way to answer the question. But that is actually that what propels us and what makes us look into different other disciplines, into well, fields which we are quite interested in, in looking. So in order, for instance, technology. Technology is one thing, but what can you do with the technology to what does it tell you about society and how can we can we use it? So in Static Price's words, if technology is the answer, what was the question? I think the most interesting for us uh, is to really define the question and then re-question the answers or sort of reformulate the answers to it. So technology is one thing and uh, nature is the other? Of course we're very fascinated by nature. A lot of what technology does is trying to imitate or to learn or to understand uh, nature. And uh, nature is just a very, very rich inspiration for us. There is always something... It's nice to study the difference between complexity and complication. Nature is very complex and rich but it's never really complicated in the sense that um, there are too many, there, the rules are relatively basic and then with simple rules in the superimposed system you create an enormous amount of variety and, uh, and complexity. And that's something which is intriguing for us. How can you create the same diversity and beauty as there is in nature using man-made tools and using our way of, uh, of thinking? And one of the ways we found as an answer is that there are tools by now, especially digital tools, which uh, we don't know exactly how they operate, but we know how to combine different operations to create a certain effect. So the effect might be beyond our imagination, but the process is something which we can very well design. So we're interested in designing a process which is able to create a result which usually can be found or is associated with nature. And uh, can you tell us something about your design method? Our design method very much arises from this. At the beginning we try to, to uh, eliminate the parameters which are or to identify the important parameters for each project and then we start to run through a very methodological uh, process where we always try to, to look at the same environmental issues, the same issues of uh, under, uh, analyzing the program 
And then basically we're trying to identify all the problems. We throw all the problems together on a big heap and try to sort out like what's connected to what and how, what's the correlation between different things. And from that we start to design actually the, um, the interaction between different elements and from that it derives, well we, we try to notate that in diagrams, it's a very efficient way for us to work, abstract diagrams produced uh, by computer programs and then we use that as a design input and I inform the diagrams with more and more information about architecture, about uh, elements at different scales until we derive at something which is well, which can be called a building, but it's still a diagrammatic way of a building and then the translation goes uh, even further. But by eliminating sort of knowledge in the beginning, we're not trying to refer back to a particular type or to a particular reference project, we're always trying to come from an understanding of the relationship between different parameters and turn that, find the right expression for that, which ultimately generates uh, our architecture. And that doesn't mean that we're not interested in history and we're not interested in, certain, in a certain typology. Of course, you need to understand these as a basic to, to really also work against it or to realize why, for instance, a train station, at, uh, in my time at UN Studio, I worked 10 years at the Arnhem train station, actually it's the Arnhem interchange, and that's an interesting thing. It's not only a project that creates a totally different space, where all the engineering and team and the architects had to find different methods of either designing or even manufacturing and building it. But it also refers back to a totally different uh, type of train station. It is a transfer station because it's not so much that people on, use the train, it is something which is an intermodal connection of six different modes of transportation. And uh, I think, I always joke, like if anyone had come and said, can you create the craziest train station you can imagine, it would not be half as interesting as that what actually came up. By just working with the site limitations, different ownerships, the different modalities of transportation, and trying to combine all this into a, sp a piece of space, it's almost like a, a machine that sort of makes all these connections possible, and then to guides people through the space and creates a memorable space at the same time. So that is actually would not be possible without understanding what why train stations of the 19th century looked like they do. Like they're a big roof uh, across the train tracks and a big hall in front with a tower and a, uh, and a clock. That was actually the type of um, manifestation of train companies. In this case it was something totally different, but then what is it what you want to manifest? And that's how the transfer node was actually articulated as something as a knotted building in the end, creating big free spans, but then within that free span building creating very different uh, spaces which seem to suck you through or seem to guide you towards the next transportation system.